Hello and welcome back to Destination Unknown, where the only thing certain is uncertainty. This is episode 10. My name is Blake Connor, here with my dear friend Josh Elliott. This is where you speak. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it would be funny if I didn't. Yeah, well, it was just concerning. <laughs> For a moment, I thought you'd gone mute. Nope, I'm here. <laughs> well, you know, Josh, I actually saw you not too long ago. Uh, yes, just a couple days ago. Just a couple days ago, we were we were uh, playing some Secret Hitler, what we talked about in our last podcast, uh, and we were just doing a little bit of traveling. My girlfriend Rachel and I, we came came to visit you down in old Knoxville, Tennessee. This is I'm four. Well, for I don't four. think I don't think fairly you can say that. You don't think fairly I can say what that I came for uh, you that that you that you came to visit me. You more so just stopped on the way back home from what your actual vacation was. Is that not what coming to visit means? Well, I just didn't want people to get the wrong idea. Oh, oh okay. So you, you don't want people <laughs> on the podcast to think that I care too much about you. I yeah, understand. I, I, want to, I want it to be very transparent that you were only in my presence for like four hours. Well, well, I want you to know that I'm four for four <laughs> on years that I visited Knoxville on spring break. I wasn't going to no, let senior year be the only year. I think it means more this time around because when if you really think about it, I traveled much further and I still made the effort to stop in because it was out of our way. Yes, that's fair. And I do appreciate yeah. it. Yeah. We won't we won't talk politics on this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Let's not get into it. Um but we did, we got to go we got to go a lot of places. Um it's my favorite kind of vacation is a traveling vacation like this one. I feel like I get bored if I stay in any one place for too long. Have you ever experienced that? Um, just a vacation being too long. Like, like you've been in a place and you almost feel bad for being bored. You're like, I'm on vacation. I shouldn't be bored. But like, you still yeah, are. Yeah, there have been times where I've like gone to the beach with my family or something. And we just stayed in like the same place for <laughs> yeah. like over a week. Yeah. And it's like, you know, by day like four or five, I'm like, I, I'm kind of over Yeah, it. your mom listens but... to this and she's like, ah! My word! <laughs> See if I ever I take you not. to the beach again! <laughs> I hope not. You know, my parents will watch, like, all the videos that I share on the Facebook page that I don't want them to watch. <laughs> <laughs> like, like I shared GURP the other day, and... <laughs> Your mom? And, yeah, don't get me wrong, like, it's a funny video, I like it, but it's just a weird video to see your son like acting in. No, there, I don't know. there are some things it's... there are some things that I am just convinced my parents will never understand. And wholly and truly <laughs> it's like neither will I. Like yesterday, for example, I am shooting a music video at the moment that should be out soon. Um, and in said video, we filled a bathtub full of coffee. And I remember, oh, gosh. Sta I remember standing above the man who was submerging himself into the bathtub of coffee. And I'm holding a camera, and there are lights in here, and he just, ugh, he surfaces from this coffee bath. And I thought to myself, my father would never understand this. <laughs> <laughs> like It's very accurate. Yeah, you, Extremely accurate. Yeah, have you ever had those moments where you think, like, right now, I'm either making my parents proud or, like, on the on the flip, you're like, right now I'm probably disappointing my mother. You know, <laughs> that was one of those moments yesterday. Here I am standing above just a Java bath. Like, oh, I could never explain this to anyone. I really couldn't. You know, you know, I've had no shame for a really long time whenever it comes to, like, our videos. Because if you think back, the embarrassing things that we would do in public, like, or the things yeah. that just people wouldn't understand, like, I've been... I've been desensitized to, like, the opinions of others, I suppose. The So the one thing that I'm still not desensitized to is, like, actually involving other people, like, public videos, like, prank videos or things like that. I I mean, it's not that I'm not a fan of those videos. It's that I personally am not the type of person to go out and, like, harass or even talk to other people. It's like, I don't care what they think of me when we do things and we're kind of minding our own business, either in public yeah. places or whatever, but it's like involving other people. That's where I, I draw the line. And I, I still get like skittish about that. Yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't do that. I'm just saying like anything that I'm doing in public, 
Like, if I'm dressed like a tennis player in very short shorts, like, fighting a mad scientist in front of the whole world to see... Oh, yeah, they probably thought we were I, so weird. It does not bother no, it me. No, I didn't care about that. <laughs> or driving a Jeep around a, an open field, <laughs> like, in circles. Yeah, like. <laughs> or being dressed as an old man running through Walmart, just being a common True. nuisance. <laughs> True. We've done a lot of silly things. We certainly and... have. What? What? Okay, so this is something that I'm interested in because I've I've been working on uh, this music video, and I know we kind of um, we kind of work in different ways when it comes to producing videos. Could you walk me through your creative process a little bit? I mean, I know we've been partners forever, and I should know this sort of thing, but I, I'm interested in like conception of idea to finished product. How does that okay. go for you? Yeah. Uh, it definitely depends on the type of video. So if I'm doing a, say, not so Mortal Kombat, yeah. um, which we've done a lot of, we've done 10 and spoiler alert, they're going to come back soon. But, um, I, first of all, message you because you usually do all the like VFX for those videos. Yeah. Um, I say usually, but you've always done all the VFX for those <laughs> videos. <laughs> but, um, so I'll message you and say, like, hey, I'm doing a Not So Mortal Kombat. These are the characters. What effects do you think we should do? Yeah. And then we'll talk about that for a little while. And then from there, honestly, there's no planning involved whatsoever. <laughs> I I go to wherever we're filming. We, we flip a coin to decide who's going to win the fight. And then... I just choreographed the fight scene on the spot. It's just it's just laughable um, that you tell me that because I can't <laughs> imagine doing that anymore. Like I was once like that, but they yeah. still turn out so good. See, like that is the only type of video that I do in that way. Fair enough. Like, every every other type of video, <clears throat> like skits, I will tend to I'll be honest, completely transparent. I don't really like doing skits. And <laughs> that's something you probably didn't know about me. Oh, but no. Genuinely like I just like normal skits. I don't really enjoy it. Yeah. Uh, I prefer doing not some Mortal Kombat yeah. because of the fight choreography, or I just like doing bigger projects. I think I think we'd like. I think both of us would like skits and sketches more if we were in the same place because I For sure. I churned out a lot of like sketches and all kinds of videos when Jacob was working with us. And then when he stopped yeah. being a regular part of it, I lost the drive because, so for me, my process, I'll tell you right now, for every one idea that I push out, uh, 10 of them are left on the chopping room, like on the, yes, on the that is, cutting. That is, what? that is very true for me I as well. I cannot think of the expression, but I scrap so many ideas. And it's not that I don't think that they're like good ideas. It's that I am the type of person, I need an accountability partner in almost yeah. all places and that's why I'm glad that I have you to basically force me to see my ideas through. I don't know how many times I've gotten just so close to doing something and then I didn't and I, I don't even have reasons for it. Like I had a yeah. whole shots list, a whole script. I was making props, I was buying things for a PUBG video over the summer and I just never did it. Um <laughs> I wrote Oh yeah. Yeah I remember you three D printing a prop Yes, for that I video. did. Like I went through all of this effort and I spent this money and then just like one day like, I woke up, like, I don't even think I, like, consciously decided. It was just, like, one day, like, weeks had passed, and I was like, oh, yeah, I never did that, did I? Oops. Dude, low-key, <laughs> low I think we've talked about you printing that prop on the podcast before. Have, we did. Yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty sure we did. I have a very different approach when it comes to what kind of project, but, like, my favorite thing to do is just big projects. Like, writing Luigi's Mansion is probably the most fun I've ever had working on anything mm -hmm. uh, in Rapture films. Except for maybe uh, when you and I wrote Indiana Josh 2 together. In just one night. Because that's just such a unique experience. Like, we've never done that before. Yeah, uh, Bailey Connerly, if you're listening to this, our one listener out there, our shining light in the darkness... Just know that while you <laughs> snored away on the other side of the couch, Josh and I came up with comedy gold, baby. That is honestly, like, genuinely, we've we've spoken about it before, but Indiana Josh 2, in my eyes, is the best finished product that we have ever, like, that we've ever had as far as, like, conception to reality. Like, oh, like everything that we... Jokes, yeah. like, everything we wanted it to be, it was. 
Like, all of the jokes landed the way we wanted them to. Like, it was exactly the video. Like, the video that we released is exactly the video that we wanted to release. Like, the, it's like and what I we can't wrote say from that, script to screen. I understand that. Yeah. Genuinely, I can't say that about anything else. Like, even Luigi's Mansion. Changed like, slightly. It, it, it was fantastic. Like, it was, it was a great project. It turned out great. It wasn't what I had originally intended. It just deviated. I intended there. I intended there for there to be more songs. I intended for there to be choreography. Like I, it just it didn't happen the way that I envisioned it. But it was close enough. Like it was great. Yeah. But Indiana Josh two start to finish. It it turned out exactly the way we wanted it to. Yeah. And I can't say that about anything else. Um. Yeah. So for me, it's like, um, when writing pro- like when doing projects anymore, I just. I get so overwhelmed by ideas because, like, I'll come up with an idea, and I'm like, oh, man, that's funny. And then I start writing out how I would do it, and then I'm like, oh, man, that's expensive. <laughs> and that, <laughs> that's, that's pretty much how it goes every time. Like, straight up. So some people that I really admire, um, have you ever watched Key and Peele? Just their sketches. Yeah. Their sketch comedy is so on point, and I think it's because the production value is so high in every sketch that yeah, they do. Like they build sure. sets, they have these outfits, like they they dress up as these different characters. They even have recurring characters, and I love it. And it's something that I would really love to do. It's just like sketch comedy. I think is made for people with more money than us because yeah, for real. Honestly, like, like we can we can make good sketches, but like if we want to push one as far as it can go and like make one really good video, you think about like we have to pour so much money into and it. And you think about the return on demand for that one video. Like <clears throat> I'm doing it yeah. for this for this music video. Um Jeremy and I went to went to the uh went to Walmart to pick up some props and stuff and for everything it was like about $175. And like that like I mean, that adds up. If that's what every video costs, like, that's a really, really low-budget video if you think about it. But we're also just spending, like, three or four days of our time doing this, buying all of these props, and it just... It becomes a lot really quickly, so I am much more selective about the projects that I take on because I want to see all of them be the best that they can be, you know? Yeah, for sure. And honestly, I've thought a, I've thought a bit about that in particular because, like... Not that GURP was a bad video, but if I had poured money into it, it could have been a lot better. I mean, that's that's anything, but, though. Yeah, that's that's all things. But I've genuinely debated, like, should I just make less things and the things that I really, like, so I can just pour a lot into that's, everything? I don't know. That's what I've it's, been trying to do, and that's, that's why <laughs> you see very, <laughs> you see a lot less coming out of me. It's because, another thing that I was thinking, and this is what happens... I think it's hard to be creative when you force yourself to be like, that's usually what I have to do is like, yeah, I ha- my inspiration comes in droves, but it's fleeting. It's like, I'll have an idea come to me and then I'll write it out and then I'll start with that initial excitement. And then as soon as that initial excitement is over, it's work. And <laughs> yeah, like that's where a lot of things die. Like I have a lot of what I think are like pretty funny ideas or at least they could be, but they just kind of, they kind of die right then and there because I'm like, ah, oh, this is going to take a lot of effort, but enough. Dude, Blake, this is kind of a, this is kind of a, a side note, Yeah. but I had a, requ- I had a, uh, I, I don't know if request is the right word, I guess suggestion mm. for something that we could do on a podcast. What's that? And they, I don't remember who told me, so I, I apologize. I'm sure you're listening. I apologize that I can't remember and credit you. Um, but someone said that they would love to hear like a podcast of us just spending the entire time writing a script together. Ooh, okay. Which I think is cool. Like, I think it's a cool idea. Yeah. It's a, it, it would be kind of difficult. It would be. I do think you want to do that? Do you want to do, do that for the next one? Uh, or did you? Yeah. 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 Let's just go ahead and say yes. All right. Yeah. But, um, no, let's do that. Let's for sure do that. For That'll us. be so cool because we can write it in the podcast and then release it the next week. Yeah. <laughs> like, no, that would be cool. That would. That is really cool, actually. Uh, Thank you for suggesting that mystery person. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, and sorry if you're they're like they probably heard this like getting built up. They're like, oh, they're gonna do it. They're gonna do it this episode, and then I'm like, hey, next week. <laughs> and you're. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, so the, I'm sorry if you were expecting it this episode. Yeah, no, well, no, I, you hadn't told me that. I think that is, I think that is a good idea. Um, you know, I I found out today that I cannot go to one of my friend's weddings because Ooh. I am booked for another wedding as the videographer that same day, and it's like Dang, it's that sucks. It's bittersweet because I can't go to the wedding, but I'm also making a lot of money. It's just like, what, yeah. what I've considered doing is I, I sent him a little text today and I told him that I was sorry that I couldn't make it, but he should still give me his address because I want to send him a wedding gift. But what I'm considering doing is printing a cardboard cutout of me in a suit and giving it to him to take to the wedding because I think that would be so <laughs> funny. I don't know if he'd that do it. That is funny. That is funny, but it is also a, one of one of those like dangerous things where it's like, it is their day. Yeah. And, like, you you just can't, like, not that I'm saying you were trying to yeah. make it about you, because obviously you weren't, but it it is funny. I, I totally agree. Yeah. Uh, it's, but they would have to be very okay with it. Yeah. And if nothing else, um, it could at least populate, like, the bachelor party or something. Maybe, maybe like that. I thought about giving it, like, a little cardboard cup holder, and it's like, give me drinks. Yeah, that is obnoxious, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> I'm hearing myself talk now, and I'm like... Dang. <laughs> you know, I do, I really like weddings. I go to a lot of weddings, um, yeah. mainly as the videographer. I've been to a few weddings um, this past year that I was actually not working in, and that was even better. Um, you really see people at their best. Everybody's dressed up. If there are family members that have historically been in fights, they clean up their acts for about three hours. So yeah. it's just like all positive vibes, bunch of good food. What do you think of weddings? Um, I love weddings. I, I this is gonna sound weird. I don't know. I <laughs> I don't want someone to listen to this and get offended. But I'm very selective with the weddings that I go to. Sure. Um, just because I don't know. They are such a special thing, and I if I'm close to both of the people getting married. Yeah. Like if I'm close to the bride and the groom. Yeah. I'll be there. 100% I'll be there. But if it's just one or the other and it's like kind of an acquaintance and I just got invited because like they like me. Yeah. Like, I don't know. I just, I feel less inclined to go. Um, and I've just been intentional about making that just a, a blank rule for me. Yeah. Like I'm not selective. It's just like, well, I am selective, but <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I feel bad saying that. No, 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 no. The weddings that I do go to, I, I just have so much fun. Like, Mark and Lexi's I wedding I danced was my little so tail off. so much fun. Oh, it was. And it was like, Best it was wedding like a I've melding of worlds because these people who I've only seen in Knoxville, Tennessee, were interacting with people from my hometown. And it's, from high yeah, school. Yeah, from high school. And it's like, it's yeah. weird, not because, like, it's just one of those things that you never imagine happening, you know? Yeah, for sure. Like, this person and then, in this did you context. go to did you go to Alex's house afterwards? Yeah, no, we were all, we were all in the okay. hot tub. That that <laughs> collection of people is something I would have never expected to like in that location. I don't know. It was just like it was me, you, Alex, Joff, uh, Cody, and Nathan Martinelli. Yeah, in Alex's hot tub, and it was just such a random collection of people. Well, I mean, like when you when you think about it, just like all of these people from from different places. Like, do you ever think about how like what some people in your life would think of other people in your life? Like, just based on the fact that you know that they'll like never meet each other. Yeah, you know, it's it is it is a weird thought. It's like you know, what would my dad think of my friend, uh, like in like in California, who he will probably never meet. You know. Yeah. Something like that. That is fun to think about. Um, so I had I had a little little uh, I'd say argument. Yeah, I'd say argument, but it was more <laughs> of a, it, yeah, it was an argument with Rachel recently because I was I just like point blank I looked at her and I was like, why does wedding planning take so long? And then she started spouting off all of these things that sounded really simple, you know, really simple to me. Uh, yeah. and she was like, well, you know, you got to find, you got to find catering. You got to find a venue. You got to find, you know, like dresses, tuxes. You have to find like a DJ and all this stuff. And I said like, babe, uh, this doesn't sound like it would take more than one day to me. And she like, she got mad. 
Like, <laughs> it was like, she was like, no, like, that's stupid. Like, what are you talking about? You could do it in a day. I was like, yeah, no, listen, listen. Here's my pitch. I said, I wake up 12.01, you know, start of a brand new day. And I plan Wait, everything out. You wake up a minute after midnight? Oh, I said a day. So 24 hours? Yes. Okay, so you're spending an entire 24 I'm hours. I'm spending an entire okay. 24 hours, yes. Okay, go ahead. So. Let's hear your pitch. Okay, so before I go into this pitch, I want to know, do you disagree with me? Um, see, yes and no. I agree with the notion that it could be done in one day, but I think that that's completely dependent on if one person was making every decision. Yeah. And the goal was to do it in one day. Yeah. Because part of the fun of, like, wedding planning, in my eyes, would just be experiencing all those things with your, like, bride to be oh but we're not it's talking like, hey, about fun today, with your bride to be today <laughs> today we're going to venues and we're gonna pick the one we like the most and maybe not decide the first day no like think about it for a while well, i mean but as far as if it's possible yeah i definitely think it would be possible well, yeah because you could book a venue you could get a caterer you could well for one no tuxes because i do not want tuxes at my wedding um i want nice clothes yeah. but not tuxes um, the dress shopping is completely on, on her, uh, on her to do. Let's just say hypothetically, she is going dress shopping and I'm doing everything else. Well, okay. I, t I told her too. I was so, like, I might not even do this alone. <laughs> so she, we had a little argument because I guess I didn't lay out the proper qualifications. And I said, yeah. and I think her initial thought was that I meant the wedding like, could be planned for and done in a day. I said, that's not what I said. I didn't say that you could, Completely like... Completely planned. Like, it's just, like, everything is accounted for, you know who's going to be doing what, and you don't have to make any more, like, phone calls. Say, like, yeah. you might need to, like, show up to, like, get your, like, tuxes or your dresses or whatever. But, like, you'll have everything lined out. You can get all your payments paid. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, basically, I told her, I said... First, I want a crack team. And she said, can I be on your crack team? And I said, well, you can. You have to help me make decisions, but you can't be on the team. And I said, it's because, and th there's no offense, but the only way this plan is going to work is that if my team is composed of all men. Because they're all going to be of the, sa <laughs> of the same lackluster opinion that I am. Because she was telling me these things that just made my eyes glaze over. She was like, but you have to make the flowers match in color. And I said, what does that even mean? What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm thinking. Here's man. Our our female listeners are going to judge us. So oh hard. no, no, it's okay. Let them judge me. Let me lay this plan out for you. Because the whole time she was like, "Well, you have to make me happy too." So I said, "I will run every decision by you." And she said, "All right." And I said, "But the only qualification to that is you can't intentionally stop me because you don't want to see me succeed." And then she gave a laugh because I knew that's exactly what she'd do. Like if, yeah. like she, <laughs> she's so posed against me on this. Like she'd just say no to every decision so that I couldn't succeed. I digress. <laughs> Wake up early, 12:01 a.m. You get four boys. You get one for the venue, one looking for tuxes, one out there looking for catering. One looking for a DJ. Me, myself, I'm going to be out looking for decorations and sending out the invites. You know, I'm going to be composing, sending out all the invites on my own. Um, so you're composing the list of guests? Yes. That morning? Yes. And, okay. and mailing same day. We do not need to know how many of them are attending because I will only invite people. I'll set the date far out in advance so people still have time to like take off work it's not like this is something that's happening next week you know it's like even a year from now like i could plan a wedding a year from now in advance we just set the date we set the time with the venue make sure that it works um that's the first thing that we we, we need to make sure we get the venue we get the invitations sent out from there uh, once those two things are locked in we just start going down the line with everything else venue and invitations are, i think are the most time sensitive um because catering I don't think catering is going to be booked a year in advance. A venue might yeah. be. Um, a DJ, I probably, I'd probably, I know DJs, you know, here. They'd be happy to do it. I tell them a year in advance, they're like, oh yeah, I'm free then. <laughs> um, I mean, 
you get the t you know who the groomsmen are going to be, and it like you you get that the good to go from them. You get their dimensions, and if the suits need tailored, that can be done later. It's just choosing like where you're going to be getting the the suits done. <laughs> you keep saying suits. Are you gonna wear a suit at your wedding? Yeah. Really? Yeah. I mean, like like a tuxedo. Are, well, I I. Are you going to wear a tuxedo? You know, well, to be fair, I guess I really haven't put that much thought into being married just yet. Uh, but yeah, I'd like to. Gotcha. See, I don't want to wear a suit at my wedding. No. What do you like? I want to wear, you know, like dress pants, a dress shirt, and maybe like suspenders or something. Okay. Like genuinely, I don't want to have a suit. Jacket I like. At my I wedding. like suit jackets. Partially because I want my wedding to be outdoors. Mm. Um, and. I am a sweaty boy, <laughs> and I will sweat if I have a suit jacket on. <laughs> that is fair. But um, the only things that I even care about my wedding, like genuinely, I've thought of, I've thought about it like several times before, and and the only my my wife to be can make all other decisions, mm -hmm. but genuinely, <laughs> I just want it to be outdoors, and. I want and I want Def Leppard to, to play <laughs> instead of a guest list. Like instead of a guest list for people to sign in, I want to have one of my groomsmen in charge of, and maybe an usher or something, but in charge of taking people's pictures as they come in with a Polaroid camera. Oh, whoa! And that's putting cool. those and putting those in a book because I think that's way cooler than a guest. Oh, that's so book, much like better, a guest dude! Book. I'm gonna take that idea right now. I'm gonna Dude, go for yeah. it. I think it's such a cool idea. I'm I'm taking some time off right here this second to type on my computer. Polaroid camera taking photos of guests as they walk into my wedding. I was I did videography for a wedding once where every single table had there were twenty five tables and every single table had a little disposable camera and it said document your night. Uh, for us, and every year on our anniversary, we will develop one roll of film. And I said, "Oh, Aww, that's, that's cool. cool. That's really cool. I like that a lot." Um, what were? <gasps> yeah. Oh, I lost my original point. The, well, I mean, honestly, I think that covered it. Is there anything that you, that you think I missed, or is there anything about my plan that didn't seem like it was going to work? You start at midnight. I think if you start at like. 1201 that gives you time to at least plan write out lists of phone numbers and who to call because no business is going to be open at that time so you lay out all your plans you make the guests or like the uh, the invitations and you mail those out like during that time period as soon as businesses start opening up 9 a.m rolls around that's when the uh when the convoy goes out baby driving all around <laughs> sending out phone calls booking venues booking djs booking catering and suddenly you come home and you say, hey, hun, wedding's ready. One year from now, we're done. I I think that it's possible. I think you could pull it off. You know, I she she told me she told me that she wants me to make a video of it. And my so my goal is to find a couple who literally cares so little that they'd let me plan their wedding for them in a day. That they just like care so little. Like they just don't care at all. They're like, yeah. Sure. Or, like, I want to post an ad on, like, Craigslist as a wedding planner. <laughs> That's so funny. And then, like, I, I'm like, all right, it's done. And they're like, what? You started yesterday. I'm like, yeah, no, here's your wedding. And then, like, they, every part of them would want to say, like, no, you can't plan a wedding in a day. But I just want them to look at it and go, wow, this is beautiful. But... <laughs> <laughs> it's it's something that I pride myself on that I have absolutely no, no proof to back up. <laughs> you know, I'm like, I could plan a wedding in a day. Um, if you think that I can't plan a wedding in a day, comment below your reasoning why, and we'll fight about it. We'll fight in the comment section. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> under the brand name, I will start spewing venomous comments at you. Mostly ad hominem attacks. <laughs> on your personal character. I hope it happens. I really want to read them. No, I really want to know like what people think of this. I because here's the thing. We we asked um so when we were in uh Georgia, we asked Austin and Samantha and I told Rachel was like, I want to get their opinion. I bet they're on my side. And I said, 
Rachel, I can tell you exactly what's going to happen right now. I was like, Austin's going to agree with me, Samantha's going to agree with you, and we're still going to be 50-50. And she was like, no, we'll see. And then we got there, and that is exactly what happened. And then the only thing that <laughs> happened was we created an argument for another couple. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> That's awesome. Oh. <laughs> what? Do you have any ideas for, like, music that you'd want to play at your wedding? Oh, gosh. Not at all. No, that's, that's the only thing that I've, like... The only thing that I'd really care about is, like, probably... Me, okay, catering in music. I'm, I'm a real... I'd say I'm a real foodie. It's not like I'm obnoxious about what foods I eat or snobby. It's just I eat a lot of food. So <laughs> we got to make sure there's enough. Yeah, for sure. Um, I really want whatever... I uh, I play at my wedding. I want at least a good chunk of it to be like classic rock. Nickelback. No. Oh. <laughs> I was gonna say, you know, classic rock. I'm re- I'm real into uh, hair metal. I'm not talking about just like shredding heavy metal. But there are a couple like love and power ballads by like Judas Priest that it's like it would be disingenuous for me to play something else. Like the last thing. So you don't want you don't want your first dance with your wife to be. Uh to be set to when arms wide open <laughs> under the sunlight okay so the the thing the thing about it is it's like whatever dj that i book for my wedding they have like i'm gonna tell them straight away it's like listen i'm not your i'm not your casual all right i don't want you to play <laughs> what you've played at every other <laughs> wedding because I've been to dozens of weddings, my friend, and they, almost all of them have sounded exactly the same. I could tell you the soundtrack to a wedding, for Christ's sake. It's like, right, they're going to throw the bouquet, single ladies. They're going to throw the garter, cherry pie. First dance song, Thinking Out Loud by Ed Sheeran. Darling, I will be loving you till we're 70. Yeah, every single time. We get it. <laughs> I go to a lot, of, like, I didn't realize... Dude, Mark and the, Lexi's first dance was to a song from Moulin Rouge. I don't even know what that is. It's a musical, but I loved it so much. That, I mean, at least it's not Ed Sheeran or like. So I, I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to make a compromise. If if I marry Rachel, she loves country music, and I don't. But it would oh, be, gosh. yeah. Uh, n- there has to be a balance. Okay, I can't just shoot yeah. down all of her song requests, and by that logic, she can't just shoot down all of mine either, because <laughs> I don't. You're just gonna have metal and country at your oh, wedding. God, I, you know, just thinking about it, <laughs> thinking about it hurts me a little bit. But, uh, like, I just don't want to dance. I just don't want to dance to like a country song, the first one, because like that's every wedding that I've been to is like the. F- Almost all of the first dances, if they're not Ed Sheeran, it's a country song. And like, I just <laughs> not that one. No, no. I just can't. I can't do it. That's a fun wedding song, though. No, dude. Like, I would look back for the rest of my life and Where did cringe. You Where did you go? <laughs> no. Come on, can I do? <laughs> yeah. No. If that song, I can just picture your wedding now. No, if that song played, literally, what would have to happen is some other dude would have to run out of the crowd and take her from me, because. <laughs> Cotton Eye Joe is about, uh, like, a guy having his girl stolen by another guy. Oh, gosh. If it hadn't been for Cotton Eye Joe, I'd have been married a long time ago. Because at his wedding, they played the song, and she got stolen by Cotton Eye (laughs) Joe. Are you just hearing about this, or is this some kind of sick joke to you? Just the handsomest, and steals your the handsomest man you've ever seen. I'm talking an angular jawline, chiseled pecs, <laughs> and just bronze skin and a long flowing bursts mane. Bursts out of the he wilderness. Bursts out of the wilderness. And he captures your betrothed. Your, he sweeps your girl <laughs> off her feet and he takes her away. <laughs> oh, that legend has it. <laughs> so don't play Cotton Eye Joe at your wedding. No, no, that is literally it's. That's what the song is about. It's not a happy-go-lucky song. It's a warning. Would you ever, like, consider having a destination wedding? Destination? Because, like, like something crazy, like getting married in Hawaii or something. Like, I've always thought that that was so silly. I mean, uh, I think it's silly because it puts everybody that you invite in a weird position. Yeah, exactly. Like, 
I get like going to Hawaii on your honeymoon. Yeah. It's like, why would you get married no, in Hawaii? I don't want. Like, I, don't, I don't want all of the like unless you live in Hawaii. No, yeah. If you live but in that's Hawaii, that's not a destination no, wedding. No, that's no, no, just... no. Destination weddings are stupid because it's it's like unless you and all of your friends have buku bucks, it's like all the people who are closest to me wouldn't be able to come. It's like if I send out invites, I'm like, all right, yeah, June twenty second. 2022 Honolulu baby everybody would be like well they had us in the first half not gonna lie sorry <laughs> yeah I mean if two A-list celebrities are getting married yeah. to each other yeah, like they could pull that that's off different. but that's different little run of the mill me can't be buying a ticket to Honolulu if you ever listen to the lyrics of Cotton Eye Joe I'm reading them right now and just listen how like dark these sound out of the context just of the recite song. them he read them read them in a dramatic voice wherever he went the hearts of the girls was to hell broken sent they all ran away so nobody would know and left only men because of cotton eye joe <laughs> what's the best vacation that you've ever taken uh yeah. So I don't necessarily count it as a vacation, but my trip to Israel is probably the best trip I've ever been on. Oh yeah, you're telling me you're telling um, me about the stories out there. Tell them the yeah. tell them the mad dog story, and then we'll wrap oh, it. Oh gosh. And then we'll wrap it. All right, we'll have we'll have a we'll have the finale. Story time. Okay. Story time. So here I so here I am in Tell Dan. Which tell Dan is what the site. Stop. What did you <laughs> get out? What did you tell him? You need to you need to leave. You told him to leave? <laughs> Alright, take off your headphones, Blake, and go away. Alright. You tell the story to no one. <laughs> no, no, no come back. I'm kidding. I'm sorry. <clears throat> Alright. I guess he actually left. So, I will tell you I will now tell you the story. Um we were at Tel Dan, which is a site in Israel. Um that was famous for their pagan worship. And the uh, the site itself was about a two-mile hike right, into Tel Dan. And <laughs> I'm not going to do it again. And we were about – we were pretty much at the site. We'd pretty much arrived. And um, during this whole tour, like through Israel – we had these headsets that we can listen to our, our guide, uh, Professor Mark Zeese of Johnson University. Um, and he was telling us about, you know, the, the site itself and, like, some of the history. And then all of a sudden he stopped speaking. And the, the faintest uh, through the headphones, I just hear... No! No! <laughs> And Cotton Eye Joe bursts out of the bushes. And no, no, no. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. But on on the headset, we hear, no, 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 no. And immediately, obviously, something is going wrong. So I start sprinting towards the front of the group because I want to be a part of whatever is happening. And I get to the front, and I see Mark Zeese with his arms spread wide, martyring himself because there is a large rabid dog rushing at our group and this dog lunges at Mark and bites him on the arms and on his leg and in a matter of seconds I have never seen anything so hardcore Mark Zeese takes this dog wrestles him to the ground and gets it in a headlock now Mark Zeese, for those of you who don't know, is probably the coolest man I've ever met in my entire life. Uh, everybody compares him to a real-life version of Indiana Jones. I'm just a little disappointed that it wasn't he is, he, he is an archaeologist. He has discovered incredible things uh, that are being displayed in Israel's, like, national museum. Ugh. And... The man, the man has climbed more mountains in the world than he hasn't climbed. So, Think about that for a second. But, <laughs> but anyway, anyway, that that's beside the point. <clears throat> Marxist wrestles this dog to the ground, 
and we're all shocked. We don't know what to what we don't know what's happening because the man just martyred himself to save us. But instead of being taken down by a dog, the man took down the dog Ooh. himself. And all of a sudden, all of these park rangers start exploding out of the bushes. <laughs> I love that and, they're expl- like they're and, not just running; they're exploding. Like I'm picturing that the bush is sitting still, and then just like a burst, like a full-grown man shoots out of it, like a cannonball. They they run over to us, and one of them starts pushing us aside. <laughs> and they don't; none of them speak very good English. But they're all like, "Back, back, get back, get back!" And one of them is frantically searching around for something. Uh, which we later find out to be a branch. And then the third man climbs a tree. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. we don't know, like, I don't know if he was looking for more dogs or if he was hiding from the one that was already (laughs) here. I don't know what the tree man's goal was. Back, back, (laughs) me too. (laughs) But one one of them climbs a tree. And then the other one with the branch that I had mentioned previously takes it and puts it on the dog's neck. And steps on it so Mark can, like, get free. Yeah. And then they they can't shoot the dog because we're so close to uh, the border <laughs> of <laughs> that, that it, a gunshot could start a war. <laughs> so what they do is they bust the dog's head oh. open with a oh. rock oh. and then shoot it with a really low caliber gun. And put it out of its misery. And the story, if it ended there, would be one thing. But it keeps going. It keeps going. They they send Mark Zeese off to some hospital to get tested. Because, you know, rabies are a thing. And Mark comes back, doesn't have the results of his test yet. Um, and we continue on with the tour the following day. And then... At one point, he gets called back to the hospital. Uh, well, no, he doesn't even get called back to the hospital. They just call him. And then he's talking. He's like, uh-huh. Yeah. Uh-huh. Okay. So tomorrow? All right. And then he hangs up and he turns around. He's like, well, I have rabies. <laughs> <laughs> and he's so nonchalant about it. And all of us are just like, that's horrible. Like, like you could die from this. And he just so chill about the whole thing goes through rabies treatment and beats rabies like it's nothing like he beat that dog (laughs) and i see the man walking around campus to this day and every time i see him i bark at him just to remind him just just for just for old time's sake (laughs) and he looks around to make sure it's not a real dog terrified (laughs) and then he then he sees me and waves and everybody on our campus, whether they were there or not, refers to him now as Mad Dog Marxies. And that is the last thing that I want to say for tonight. Thank you all for tuning in to Destination Unknown, Episode 10. Next time, we will be writing a script. Yes, 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 Keep yes, yourself yes, yes. safe from rabies. And if you would like to have your wedding planned in one day, please contact me. Thank you. Thank you.